the Titans look to light it up in Sioux City. Lewis Central, one went away from the dome. St. Albert running with the Raiders. The Falcons take flight for their ninth trip indoors the last 10 years. Historic day for the top ranked Reavers. The IW juggernaut rolls on. Hey, not rolling, but running. The St. Albert cross country team goes back to back. Back to the future for the fourth ranked volleyball team. Hey, where to next? Ditto for the third ranked women's soccer team. Hey, how does Florida sound? How does this sound? The Bluff Sports Zone starts right now. Hello, I'm JJ Davis, and thanks for joining us for another edition of the Bluff Sports Zone. And you know, I can still remember the first time I met the Lewis Central football team. Believe and achieve. That was the deal from day one. Well, the Titans believed and achieved all the way to the state quarterfinals. One win away from the Dome and a place where no Titan team had gone before. And standing in the way, fifth ranked Sioux City Heelan. Road game coverage brought to you by Ginny Edmondson Sports Medicine. They shook on it the playoffs for the second time in three years. Early first quarter, 30-25 from the five. Austin Simmons with a gun. Mark Savage good for 38 yards, but that was it for the LCO show. Sioux City Healing averaging more than 40 points a game. Look at this, struggled early on. Dylan Miller with the sack. Third possession, the Crusaders on the move. Trent Solsma to Connor Spears, first down at the heel in 38. The junior quarterback, 20 of 30, 258 yards to Spears again, number 14 to the Titan 29. Drive continues into the second. Third and eight, LC 13. Solsma buys time to Philip Jacobson, who holds on home team first and goal. Heelan, 10 plays, 82 yards. Manny Alcarez finishes it off. Seven to Zip Crusaders, 839 left in the half. Head coach Jim Duggan walking a mile on the sideline. Lewis Central's offense, miles to go, just 77 yards and four first downs in the first half. And here's two of them, Simmons to Savage both times. LC fans hoping for some second half magic down by just a touchdown, but make that two. Sioux City Healer took the second half kickoff, 68 yards. That was the freshman Jack Wegger, and then Trent Solzma to Connor Niles. Solzma then with some nifty moves of his own, ran it in from 20 yards out, 14 nothing. Next possession, first and 10 for their own 42. Solzma right down the middle to Philip Jacobson, 58 yard scoring play, 21 zip home team. Chris Hannafin's defense, a valiant effort. Lewis Central's offense couldn't get it in gear. Just 139 total yards. Austin Simmons was sacked eight times. LC turned it over three times as fifth-ranked Sioux City Heelan picked off the Titans 21 to nothing. Now LC down by just a touchdown at half, had a shot. That's what we told the kids in there at halftime, you know, that we were just down one score and, and shoot, we come out and make some plays and uh, we're right back in it. You know, we just didn't have the horsepower offensively and, and uh, that hurt us tonight. As a team, I wanted nothing more than uh, a win for my guys, but they fought hard and I cannot be prouder of them, every single one of them. <laughs> it hurts pretty bad right now. I can, I mean, kind of speechless to tell you the truth. I, I don't know what to say, but I tried my best, and that's all I can say right now. You know, I think a long time in the future, we don't realize it now, but in the past, or in the future, we'll, uh, we'll really realize what we did as a team and what we uh, started at Lewis Central. How do you think the senior class is going to be remembered when it's all said and done? I think we'll remember it as a class that worked hard and came together and did something that's never been done at LC before. Uh, trailblazers, I guess, trailblazers. You did something. You did something for the program and the school, okay, that, that is unmeasurable. Okay? They did something that nobody else has ever done, gone to the quarterfinals, and uh, that's, a, that's a standard. That's where the bar needs to be set now and, and uh, something to shoot for for our future teams. Believe and achieve. That was the battle cry. Lewis Central believed and achieved. And this Titan team will forever be remembered 
as the one that started it all. One, two, three, three! Go, boy. This was a winnable game as we take a look at our Flex Physical Therapy scoreboard. Mark Savage, a good one, caught seven balls for 82 yards. A rough night for the Super Sox. Austin Simmons just harassed the whole game. A couple of picks, but you still gotta remember, he's only a sophomore. Alex Martin, not really a factor, but does average five yards per carry. While LC struggled against the Crusaders, the eighth-ranked Falcons running with the Raiders. Here's IDUB TV student Austin Heinen. The eighth-ranked Falcons take on seventh-ranked Mount Air at home, trying to get back to the dome. Opening possession of the game, Mount Air's Jacob Sabaka connects with Cody Stackhouse for a big gain right off the gun. Following play, Sabaka bobbles the snap, but he makes up for it with a huge run. The Raiders are on a roll here early. Later in the drive, Falcons force a third down, but Sabaka gets another completion. This one a shame, swank for the first. A few plays later, third and goal Raiders, Sabaka runs the option to Stackhouse, but Jake Benjamin will have nothing of it. Falcons force a first and goal. Down air decides to go for it. Sabaka rolls out, looking for the receiver, Brady Poor, but no go. St. Albert D gets a huge stop. Falcon offense finally hits the field, third and long, deep in their own territory, Tucker Kojic rolls out trying to find an open receiver, but no one is open, he's sacked, St. Albert forced the punt, the last Raider possession, they march down the field, no problem, this time, not so easy, three and out this time, courtesy of the Falcon defense, both defense is dominant early in this one, early second quarter, Falcons up seven zip, Mount Air's Casey Packham with a nice punt here, this is a beauty, hitting St. Albert's offense deep again. Starting near their own goal line, the Falcons, Isaac Finn, gets a good carry here to give his offense a first down and some much needed breathing room. But the Raider defense at it again. Next play, Colgit tries to sneak up the middle, nothing doing. Later in the drive, Falcons third down, Colgit throws, and that's Jake Lewis there who will be feeling that hit in the morning. Another punt here for the Falcons. Late in the second quarter, Mount Air looks to tie up things up and said, Bumbo! But Riley Wheeler is there to cover it. Next place to lock it. Whoopsie daisy! The Raiders are shooting stuff in the foot here. Following a punt, Falcons are back in business. Benjamin gets a solid run, gain a 16 here. And then a few plays later, Isaac Finn here. He turns on the Jets and busts out a 75 yard run for the score. This being the first offensive touchdown of the game, Falcons a 14 nothing late in the first half. Under a minute to go in the second quarter. Raiders trying to find an answer. Sabaka completes the four, and he gets a huge run after the catch. First down, Raiders. Four seconds to go in the first half. Counter lines up the far turn, said Sabaka loses the ball, and defensive lineman Sean O'Neill with the pick. He takes it to the house, a 45-yard pick six for the junior. The Falcons defense dominates this one, a 28-0 shutout over previously unbeaten Mount Air. St. Albert returns to the dome to keep their title hopes alive. For Bluff Sports Zone, I'm Austin Heine. Thanks, Austin. So St. Albert does it again. And as you can see on our Flex Physical Therapy scoreboard, for the most part, on the ground. Isaac Finn, some good numbers. Only carried the rock 10 times. And Tucker, his usual productive self. Jacob Bengen, really coming on strong. Next up, the Falcons. Another trip to the Dome for the state semis. St. Albert tackles Emmitsburg Saturday, November 10th. Kickoff just after 1 o'clock. Record-breaking day for the top-ranked Reavers. I-Dub does it again. Surprised? We'll hear from one of the record-breakers, guess who, when we come back. No team covers Southwest Iowa sports like the team at Jenny Edmondson Sports Medicine. For nearly 25 years, Jenny Ed Sports Med certified athletic trainers have cared for thousands of area athletes and their schools. And our partnering physicians at Nebraska Orthopedics help ensure you're taken care of from diagnosis through rehab. If you need to be seen now, come by our Saturday morning walk-in clinic. It's open all fall from 8 to 9.30 a.m. Jenny Edmondson Sports Medicine.
of this log. Yeah. Whoa! I like the big black ones. I like the brown wiggly ones. Mm, I like the green crunchy ones myself. Whoa. Get out and explore nature. There's surprises everywhere. Go to discovertheforest.org. <clears throat> Anyone up for dessert? G morning, sunshine. Wakey, wakey. Text me. Are your parents home later? We can hang. LUV, love you. JK. Holla back. Holla back. Holla back. <laughs> Are you with your friends? That's lame. We're in a huge fight right now. XO. What did you dream about? Something I did. Are you on your way to the I'm beach? Lonely. Nude pics. Send me some. Text me. My name's Eddie Metcalf. I enjoy working in my yard. And, you know, I can't. I can't do that anymore because I'm missing most of my lung. They did a CAT scan of my kidneys. No more kidney stones, that's the good news, but we found a spot on your lung. That frankly scared the hell out of me. I hadn't smoked in 22 years. How could this happen to me? He said, well, you know about radon gas. Well, you know, I heard about it. He said, well, the second leading cause of cancer in America is radon. 22,000 people a year die from this. I literally left the doctor's office, got a test kit, put it in the house, and our result was uh, 39.8. The upper limit is four. We got to get this fixed. That was on a Monday, and on Wednesday, our mitigation system was up and running. Well, I think everybody should have their house tested. We'd never know we'd still be living there. I could get another tumor from it. Right now, it's changing my life. This portion of the Bluff Sports Zone brought to you by the NARMI Investment Group at Baird, 402-964-4400. Another air show at Lewis Central, another track meet, and again, was there any doubt? The number one team in the nation continues to roll. This top-ranked IDUB hosted the North Dakota State School of Science in the Midwest Football Conference semifinals. Say that three times. <laughs> and less than 30 seconds in, it was over. The Reavers come running out looking for their first 10-win season in school history, and it didn't take them long. First play, Jake Waters finds Dion Long. Number one gets to the sidelines, turns on the Jets, and is gone. 60 yards in the blink of an eye at 7 0, just 18 seconds in. North Dakota State School of Science starter Josh Hansana picked off four times last time they played. Try four more this time. Travis Green here, three of them. I dub fumbled it right back, so third possession. Waters to long. The Super Soft would grab seven for 107 yards. Sets up this 29-yarder by Lance Irvin. Irvin, 124 points on the season, a new national JC record. Later in the first, Waters to Will Franson, his only catch good for 21 yards. A few plays later, Bernard Roberts spins in from six out. 17-0 Reavers, 525 left in the quarter. Now Jake was 18 of 26, 261 yards with some help from his friends. Martez Barr, one-handed. Check out the replay. Number three's only grab, and it's a doozy. First and 10, Wildcat 14. Time for the record break. Waters to Long. Dion's 24th touchdown of the season breaks the old mark set 18 years ago. The route continues. Number one, my man right here. We out here. We out here. The dark side shuts down the visitors' run game. Dakota under 100 yards. Second quarter, I-Dub's Andrew Stone becomes the first Reaver with 100 career receptions. Number 11, 7 on the day, 97 yards. This 51-yarder, it's 31 zip. Jake Waters throws four touchdowns on the day. Deion Long catches three of them, 38 nothing. Head coach Scott Stromar then takes Jake out after less than two quarters of work. Doesn't matter. Bernard Roberts, 107 yards on the ground. Don Jackson there, 98. Aaron Wimberly runs free for 64 yards, and this touchdown, it's 52 to zip at the half. The Reavers just whoop the Wildcats 65 to nothing. I'm proud of our guys because it's the 10th win. They, it, the school's never reached 10 wins in one season. We did it this year, and, and uh, um, now we're one step closer. 
Did you think in the beginning of the year that this would be possible? Um, yeah, I, I actually did think it was possible. Um, coming in, going into prep school, I wanted to, I wanted to be the number one prep player in the nation. So I said, why not do that in JUCO? If I'm gonna be here, I might as well strive for it all. So um, coach calls the plays for me. I execute the plays, and that's how it goes. You get the shutout. What's the strength of this defense? Uh, of course, I'm a defensive lineman, so it all starts with us. You know. We, we, we make it make it all happen. The game is one loss up front. Ladies and gentlemen, thanks for one coming out. One thing that impresses me, your coaches continue to coach and the players continue to maintain their focus toward that common goal at the end, despite the scoreboard. Well, and that's one of the things, uh, you know, that, that we stress all the time. I don't care if it's number one, you know, no first guy in or the fourth guy in, we're coaching them. And I think that's why our program's where it's at in a short time. That's why game balls are handed out to record breakers not even four years into the program. The top-ranked Weavers, 10-0. Next up, the Midwest Football Conference Championship game. Another ho-hum four-touchdown day for everybody's All-American. And again, Jake Waters played a quarter and a half. We won't forget Dion Long for a long time. The Maryland recruit breaks a long-standing NJCAA record. Bernard Roberts quietly goes over 100 yards as the Reavers juggernaut rolls on. Next up, Ellsworth for the Midwest Football Conference Championship. And after that, the National Championship. How about a state championship? I'll race you for it. They did after the break. What does the world need? What will you become? Iowa Western. The world is waiting. You know, girls, I used to cheer back in my day. Ready? Okay! Go team! That was amazing. 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 Mom. That was amazing. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of siblings in foster care who'll take you just as you are. What? You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of teens in foster care who would love to put up with you. Hey, Luis, did you know that your Elmo's plan? Your plan? Yeah, Elmo's mommy said that if Elmo is too sick to go to school, the plan is that Elmo stays with Luis and Maria. Oh, yes, we have that plan all in oh, place. Oh, great! <laughs> you never know when your child will be too sick to go to school. So have a plan ready so your child can stay home and get healthy. Luis is the man because he's Elmo's plan. The man because he's Elmo's plan. <laughs> to learn more about preventing flu, visit flu.gov. At Council Bluff Savings Bank, our goal is to help you, your families, and your businesses grow and prosper for generations. We take pride in our community, whether it's volunteering our time or helping individuals, families, and businesses succeed. We provide you with the personal service and attention you deserve. With over 220 years of banking experience, decisions are made locally. We are Council Bluffs people operating at Council Bluffs Bank to help Council Bluffs be a better place to work and live. Council Bluffs Savings Bank, hometown banking, the way it used to be. Member FDIC. This portion of the Bluff Sports Zone brought to you by Cutler O'Neill, Meyer Woodring, family owned funeral home, serving Council Bluffs in Southwest Iowa for over 100 years. Try keeping up with these guys. It's not easy. They'll give you a run for your money. You see, running is what they do, and they've been doing it for years, and they've been very good at it. So good, in fact, that this bunch of birds just went back to back, and made a little bit of history along the way.
Welcome to the little school that can. It already has on the football field and is still catching fire. It's in line for a state quarterfinal match in volleyball. Just killed it in the regional final. This flock of Falcons, though, led by four seniors, been there and done that. Won the state cross-country championship for the second year in a row. Josh was going to run his race. Scott was going to run his race, our number one and two guys. Um, and then the bottom line was uh, something that we talked about a lot is uh, uh, teams win championships. Um, we wanted everybody to do their job, and, uh, and that's what they did. Did they ever? Five PRs or personal records out of seven. And then there's Josh, Josh Sindelar. St. Albert's top runner became the first Falcon ever to win an individual state cross-country title. Just overwhelming. I mean, it's kind of like, honestly, I didn't even know that no team, no individual guy had won it the, up until like the week of state, actually. So, so I mean, yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty awesome. Most meets, I'll follow Josh, but he always takes off. But I know behind me, there's a good pack that work really well together, and that's what wins our meets and the state championship. It was really indescribable at first because we just we'd won the championship, but we didn't really even know what that meant. It hadn't sunk in at all. I think it was just our entire team really peaked at the right time. We all ran our best races at state, and that really helped us just to score the least amount of points. I think it's a close-knit bunch. You know, a lot of people think cross-country is just about running. We do a lot of that, but we have fun too, and that makes for a good makes for a good team. These guys, I've been running with them for four years, and it's just just great, great, great friendship to have, and and then to win a championship in the sport that I love with them just makes it that much better. We really put in a lot of hard work this summer. We uh, put in a lot of miles, and it just really helped out in the end. We're all really close and we talk a lot, but like when we're just around campus and stuff, we're just kind of, we're the quiet group in the background where all the other sports kind of overshadow us. I was really happy that Evan ran one of his best races and Josh won it. And I mean, everybody just ran really great. And it was really happy. They're close. Um, we have fun. Uh, they work extremely hard and uh, I'll always remember them for that. And that's that. These birds of a feather flock together, and the results? Championships, all for one and one for all. All in for a fun trip to Florida? How about Missouri? Make that a business trip, indoors or outdoors. What's the goal on the other side? In 1977, an eight-year-old boy picked up the game of golf from his father. The odds of that same boy then making it to the US and European pro golf tours, one in seven million. The odds of the Big Easy winning the US Open twice, one in 1.2 billion. The odds of him having a child diagnosed with autism, one in 110. Ernie Els encourages you to learn the signs at autismspeaks.org. Get up, be get, get up, be get groovy. Kid, what's up with you? Let's get up and play. Do something. Stop slumping like a lump all day. Get on up, come on. Get out the door. Let's shake that booty like never before. Let's run, have fun. Let's jump and groove. Get up and get that body up. Make it move. Get up, get up, get up, and be a player. Get up, get up, get up. Woo! Let's run, have fun. Get up and be a player. Get up and play an hour a day. Ouch! Sorry. For cool playtime ideas, go online. Just don't stay long. Get up, get up. Did you uh, get a call from the coach about those kids who were caught drinking? Not our guys. They know better. Yeah. They know better. Heads up, sport. Real kids are curious about alcohol. 40% tried by the eighth grade. Talk early, talk often, get others involved.
You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent because kids in foster care don't need perfection. They need you. What does the world need? What will you become? Iowa Western. The world is waiting. Digging it with the IW volleyball team. Just keeps on keeping on with a few kills along the way. Tradition. It's what the Weavers are all about. Try six straight trips to the big one. And now, make that seven. The Reavers are headed to the national tournament. Fourth-ranked IDUB swept three straight opponents at the Super Regional Tournament in Centralia, Illinois. The Reavers, three more kills to run their record to 43-2. IDUB picks up some more hardware. At the start of every match, I'm, I'm nervous to kind of see how we're going to come out of the gate and how we're going to get off. And uh, in, in every situation, they got to a really good start and just continued on that track all weekend long. The game is intense. That's part of the tradition here at Iowa Western. Uh, long before I was here, uh, to be a part of the national tournament, to have a, a team that uh, compete for a national title, contend for a title every season, year in and year out. So it's exciting to be, exciting to be a part of it. The team has walked away with 24 straight wins. IDUB looking to claim a few more prizes at the national tournament. The Reavers leave for West Plains, Missouri, Tuesday, November 13th. Meanwhile, the third-ranked women's soccer team is headed to Florida. IDUB, here on the attack, he is also looking to score at the national tournament. The Reavers will come in a sparkling 17-1-1. IDUB is coming off another Region 11 tournament championship. It's fun to be able to get out and to compete uh, against these teams and to, and to, and to consistently uh, beat them on a regular basis. It's fun. It really is fun. <laughs> We've reiterated to the girls multiple times that this is a business trip down to Florida and uh, we want to make sure that we go down uh, with the mindset that we're not, we're not just content being there. IDUB here on the attack leaves for the Sunshine State Saturday, November 10th. It's in. The soccer team, like the volleyball team, looking for some more keepsakes. I honestly don't think I've ever covered a program that's performed at a very high level in every sport. That's how successful this fall season's been at IDUB, and we're not done. It's truly been a privilege. So there you go. All good things must come to an end. Until next week. <laughs> so for the Bluff Sports Zone, I'm J.J. Davis, and as always, I'll see you around.